Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I just want to uh, note what other my colleagues have that I, uh, the way this blue slip is being handled uh, just strikes me as uh, uh, troublesome, worrisome uh, about how we're going to proceed as a committee. And I just want to make sure that that's noted for the record uh, that I join with my colleagues in that concern. Uh, sir, thank you very much uh, for being here and answering our questions. I, I'm grateful um, to have this opportunity to talk with you. And I want to just note with respect uh, your long life of service. Uh, um, I want to jump right in and some of the uh, some of the direction that Senator Coons was going in um, and talked a little bit about the, and maybe also Senator Harris, a little bit about the relationship between incarceration and crime. Um, you previously suggested that an increase in incarceration has led to less crime. Uh, in fact, you stated, and I'm quoting you now, I often hear discussion uh, now that the incarceration rate is down, um, can't sentencing policies be adjusted? Um, what I personally have found remarkable is what James Toronto of the Wall Street Journal calls the Fox Butterfield effect. Uh, for Fox Butterfield is a New York Times reporter who wrote a series of articles with a general theme, uh, we have more inmates despite the drop, of, drop in crime. It never dawned on Mr. Butterfield that the two might be related, uh, that because we have more inmates, we have a drop in crime. I am not here suggesting, this is again continuing your quote, that this is always true. There are many variables, but Fox Butterfield effect is out there. An expression of the supposed paradox with the casual relationship should be obvious, including on the topic of crime rate and sentencing policy, ending your quote. Now, the data to me is overwhelming. Uh, according to Pew Charitable Trust, for example, uh, crime dropped the fastest in America, in, uh, uh, excuse me, dropped the fastest in 2015 in states with larger declines in incarceration. Um, and in the top 10 states with the largest declines in the incarcerated population, uh, the crime fell an average of 14.4%. And so I just wanna basically know, do you still believe that incarcerating more people leads to lower crime rates? And can you explain your beliefs? I think my quote makes clear that I, I'm not necessarily taking a position with regard to that. I would say that in Wisconsin, which is the area obviously I'm most familiar with, it's a very complicated circumstance with a, a huge set of variables. For example, the Criminal Penalty Study Committee work resulted in legislation in the early 2000s. The incarceration rate in Wisconsin went up to about 2008. Then the incarceration rate went down from 2008 to 2013 by about 3%, and now it's going up again. I wrote an article called The Swinging Pendulum because Wisconsin's sentencing philosophy and sentencing laws have changed so often over the course of the last 15 years. So two, two things. You're in Wisconsin. I live in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, uh, I know your city. I know mine. Um, so I, I, maybe I could put some blunt questions to you. Senator Harris was obviously asking about the power of drug courts. Uh, and I can again cite to you data, but just very plainly, um, do you believe we should, that it's the best practice to be locking up nonviolent uh, folks who are addicted to drugs as opposed to alternatives, what we're seeing, that can lower incarceration rates, lower cost to taxpayers, and get them the help that they need, which ult ultimately affects their recidivism rates and their, their continued use of uh, illegal substances. What I can say consistent with the canons, Senator, is when the Criminal Penalties Study Committee returned its report, one of the big findings was that in-out decision, prison versus probation. And then the governor and the legislature said, the same people, we want you to address probation because we think too many people are being placed in prison rather than probation because probation was insufficient. So one of the things that we did is we looked to the state of Minnesota, which is a very robust probation system, and that robust probation system of Minnesota might result in less incarceration and more community corrections. So, so can I interrupt you because I think I get the gist of what you're saying and maybe just shift for my last 40 seconds. Um, I, I'm, I understand the, uh, the, the case McCleskey versus Kemp, which demonstrated significant compelling evidence uh, that implicit racial bias has an impact uh, in the judicial system. Um, but yet they threw it out as a factor for deciding, on, on, in this case, on death penalty cases. Uh, and I'm just curious, do you think implicit racial bias exists in our criminal justice system? I apologize, Senator, I'm not familiar with the case. Uh, I would indicate only that I would do my very best as a judge to ensure that no biases came in. 
Title. You're aware that African Americans for, are stopped more than whites uh, for drug searches in this country, uh, that there's no difference between blacks and whites for using drugs or dealing drugs, but they're 3.7 times more likely to be arrested for it. Uh, you're aware of the data, I imagine, that says that African Americans are more likely to get mandatory min minimum sentences for the same crime. You're probably aware of the data that African Americans uh, are more likely to serve uh, more times for similar crimes. Do you think implicit racial bias exists in the justice system as you know it? One of the things I can say, Senator, is that I want to put my pro bono efforts into... I'm not, I'm not asking about you, you specifically, sir. I'm asking, do you think racial bias exists in the criminal justice system? I, I can't be in a position, Senator, of uh, under the canons of ethics of taking positions until I would, would be sir, able to do it. Sir, I'm sorry. The data and the evidence is profound. I've had Republican nominees, Democratic nominees... FBI leaders in hearings I've had simply point out the fact that in the United States of America, implicit racial bias impacts the criminal justice system. And you have no opinion whether on the facts or no assessment whether racial bias exists in the American criminal justice system. I try to put my um, time and effort into those areas where it's most, where I think it would have an impact. For example, for the Federal Defender's Office in Wisconsin. I, I, that's I, not the question I'm asking, sir. I'm asking yes or no, do you think racial bias, implicit racial bias, exists in the criminal justice system, yes or no? I would indicate, Senator, absolutely, if I can take a look at all those statistics and studies that you would did, I would be able to be in a position to offer and an you, you haven't? You're a judge in the United States of America, and you, you have not looked at issues of race in, in sentencing the criminal justice. I'm sorry. I know I'm over my time, Mr. Chairman. I, I find this astonishing.